we have a two minute pitch and then we'll have three minutes of feedback and I will ask uh, the the mentors on a rotating basis to to res to uh, provide feedback. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sridhar, and I'm here to talk on behalf of Team Kuber. Um, Kuber is an interesting Indian name for the God of Wealth, and my program um, centers around using stock purchase plans and maximizing that. I'm going to start off with a simple graph. This just shows the historical returns of S and P 500 over the last. 80, 90 years, it's an annual CAGR of around 10%, but there exists an instrument out in the market today, especially for publicly traded companies, which can give you a return of an annualized return of about 17.6% on an average case. Um, in best case scenarios, it could go significantly higher up to 35 to 40%. And in the worst case, it can come down to about 15 or 14%, but an annualized return of about 17.6%. However, you can see that while three fourths of most publicly traded companies across the globe offer this benefit, employee stock purchase plans, less than 30% of employees worldwide take advantage of this plan. Um, there are a variety of reasons why people have, um, uh, people don't take advantage of this plan, but the two most important considerations seem to be based on education around it, as well as just awareness of the plans. And for most employers, they want people to be taking part in employee stock purchase plans because there's a lot of research that shows positive correlation between employee engagement, loyalty, tenure, and having skin in the game with stocks. So there are employers who want people to take care, uh, to participate in plans. There are employees who want to make money, but they're not. So this is where we want to come in. We basically want to come in with a simple platform that allows for both education, investment, as well as um, managing the entire stock purchase ecosystem. Uh, we wanna work with stock brokerage companies, employers and employees to increase the participation rates from 30% going all the way up to 60 or 70% to unlock a lot of value for both employees and employers. Um, so far, we've done um, a lot of interviews with employees and we found out that there's a pent up demand for it. Uh, we're currently in the process of building out a prototype to identify the best ways to test some M ML models where we can take historical tax data as well as historical stock data. We'll give you about 10 more, 10 more seconds. To run it through a portfolio to identify the best return. So um, I would love to get some feedback on ways to open up this conversation with employers, which is where I'm currently stuck today. So that was, uh, that was my 120 second pitch on what we're trying to do at Team Cooper. So my concept is on food as a service. Uh, we are focusing on optimizing the way our current kitchen works across various food services companies. <clears throat> Some of the pain points we have noticed is that in a, uh, 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 in a regular kitchen, there is multiple inefficiencies, including you know, multiple inventories, uh, where there is, very diff there is a lot of difficulty in managing cost and consistency across, for food across locations. There are multiple vendors who supply materials to the kitchens, which also leads to inconsistency in costing of products. Uh, there is issues regarding quality control because it falls at the responsibility of a chef on duty. And different cuisines also required you know, specialized personnel uh, to execute this across locations. So our solution has been a, a, a range of long shelf life products, which are 100% customized for the customer, which requires very minimal cooking at the kitchen. Uh, we focus on centralized quality control and we focus on healthy food and they're manufactured uh, with globally certified contract manufacturing facilities. We have basically executed this uh, uh, concept for the client in Sri Lanka where we have built a network of 25 you know, purpose-built kitchens to uh, run a cloud kitchen business uh, where the first brand uh, where they're running multiple brands. The first brand, which is the Indian brand, has been launched across two, three locations in Colombo. Uh, we have already earned a revenue of around $200,000 from this client over the last 12 months. So our concept can apply across hospitality companies where we can look at hotel companies, we can look at banquets, restaurants, caterings, where people can use our production solution to make their processes not only easier, also more efficient and cost-effective. We have conducted interviews over the last two, three weeks uh, with various 
potential clients. We have met a lot of restaurant chains globally where they're looking at setting up, you know, a standardized uh, chain restaurants or converting their existing chain into a standardized product uh, where we see a potential market size of almost $500 million. We have spoken to mass, uh, multiple institutional catering companies, especially in the Middle East, where they're looking at reduction in manpower costs and where we see a potential market of almost a billion dollars a year. And we recently also spoken to the Indian Navy, where they're looking at products which can save uh, space. We'll give you about 10 seconds. To, Thank you. And uh, which can be executed from small spaces, where we also see a potential of around $200 million a year. So this is the progress we have made till now. Thank you. We'd love Thank to get you. some feedback. Can you guys see it? Yes, we can. Okay, we awesome. were two minutes start. Thank you. So uh, we are Agile Mindsets. And um, what we're trying to solve is a performance uh, culture platform. Um, how did we come up with this idea? Not all workplaces are created equal. You know, people are less motivated or more motivated depending on where they are and what they're doing. Uh, there are a lot of successful companies out there. There's the Googles and the Amazons and the Facebooks and many others who have successfully created this performance culture. The question is, can, this, can these best practices be made scalable through software? And that's what we're trying to achieve here is, what if every company, be it on, in any industry, in any country, if they could leverage a software that brought the best practices to them, um, maybe everybody would be doing the best work and have the best time of their life. Uh, the founders team is uh, myself, Priya, a managing management leader, and I've been recognized for employee engagement and maximizing potential. And my partner is Anusha. She's a product management leader, uh, pricing strategy, et cetera. And our shared values are that we want to contribute to the larger problems. Uh, we are both technical, uh, been in the networking space, and we're looking at, hey, how, what can we do about the future of work? You know, what, what, how can we improve it? And our focus is on execution efficiency. Those are our, our shared values as well. The personas that we have identified are the manager and the employee. The manager is busy finding good projects for the team, has their own deliverables, does not have the time to scale uh, when there's a large team involved and into the details of what motivates whom. The employee themselves are motivated when they see an enormous impact of the work that they would do. Um, they're motivated when challenged with newness of the work it, that's aligned with their strengths. Um, and they, when they're recognized by their managers and peers because it makes them feel trusted and they feel that they have the freedom to do more. The first prototype we are aiming for is going to be used by managers for the employee. Um, so based on the customer interviews, we've identified three areas. Uh, last time we spoke, we had yet to do all the interviews. So this is after the interviews. One is that the high impact that we just mentioned, the strengths, um, and then the third part is the recognition. For, and we identified different things we could do, maybe a short video that shows what a high impact might be, maybe a strengths finder and a database, but some of those solutions do exist. And then recognition rewards vendors exist. So what we're trying to do, uh, we decided is that we will uh, focus on the timely recognitions Going with Nereal's hooked concept, which is where, you know, in a game, uh, you know, you get small rewards and you get hooked onto it and you get, keep on doing more and more, want to do more. Same has been seen with health and fitness apps where, you know, you get rewards for the work that you've done and you stay hooked. Uh, leveraging that same psychology and bringing it to uh, work and the recognition to work. Uh, and the, what we're doing is timely recognitions. The MVP, have about 10 seconds. Okay, the MVP would be, um, you know, aiming to do third-party integrations to time it right because they're already project management softwares, OKR tool sets, uh, leveraging sentiment AI for measurement and other vendors for the others, um, for the actual services. And this talks about how Embark has been used, um, be used for like cross-checking when we're making personas. The design thinking mentorship has been amazing. Shout out to Julia. Uh, who has helped us throughout. It's been a very good work um, in a brainstorm on different solutions together. And um, she led us through the whole process. The showcases have been helpful getting, um, you know, experts and employee uh, attendees uh, helping us out and giving ideas. And lastly, Podium X has been um, really beneficial to see how others have solved the problem. 
Thank you very much. Uh, the name of my idea is Air Care. So <clears throat> during this pandemic time, this tra air travel is really cha has been challenging, and especially for the elder people, elderly people, it is it has been uh, really bad. So I am just uh, in this idea where what we are trying to solve is we are trying to make their life a little uh, easy, and it is. So uh, this problem actually I faced when my uh, parents came last year and they got stuck in the US and they were not able to go back. So I actually am trying to ensure a safe travel for my elderly parents because I am kind of worried to let them travel alone because there is no one to help them if they face any immigration health or other issues and which makes me feel nervous. So what kind of problem they are facing? So if you see for the elderly uh, people perspective, <laughs> there, some of their concern like what if I can cannot contact my son or what if I cannot train the boarding pass? Sometimes they cannot like understand the foreign accents. So these are some typical challenges. And for the child side also, I mean they are also sometimes worried that what if their parents feel uh, uh, her parents don't feel well or what? What if the connecting flights gets cancelled or delayed? Or what if they get institutional uh, get institutional quarantine? So these are some kind of typical concerns which I faced and I have seen a couple of my friends also are going through this exact same pain points. So <clears throat> and what I'm trying to do in high level, the value provision is for child, it is like being peace of mind, the children during when their uh, elderly parents travel and for elderly people, it will be like boost their confidence. So probably they will, they will, they can travel with minimal help. So the idea is something like this. So it will be a platform, think like Uber or Airbnb combined. So it is like a platform where I have two types of customer. One of customer is like the child or their parents. And the other side, I have some partners, like someone who can help. I am not hiring anyone uh, to help this first type of customers. I am thinking of some kind of gig economy style uh, uh, workers, I mean, task-based worker who can help this uh, the first type of client. So what the first type of client can do, they can just post in my um, site, website or a mobile app that my parents are traveling to Delhi on this date, anyone planning to travel. And I've already recruited some folks who will be willing to travel during that time. Probably they are college students or nurse or some gig workers who can just um, do this service on behalf of uh, some uh, money or some kind of um, benefits. And air cover comes into the picture here because it is the, it is managing the platform. So it gets some money from the first type of customer and it uh, takes a cut. And then it also uh, gives a discount or some kind of gift coupon to the other type of customer, which is- 10 student. seconds, please. Yeah. So this mainly, uh, this actually, this really covers my um, entire, uh, the, this, my presentations. So I already started doing some follow me home and I also doing some customer interviews. So I interviewed around 10, uh, such type one customers and almost eight of them are actually agreed. And for two of them said that their parents are not old enough to take this, I mean, leverage this kind of service. So uh, it, it is, so far it is going extremely well. And I am getting uh, good guidance from this Embark team and uh, my mentor, Ken, I mean, he has been helping me, um, significantly helping and it is going, so far it is really going well. Yeah, that's all, thank you. Emerald is, about simply pure healthy lifestyle platform. I'm ready to support you. I am the CEO of this company. The problem is that too many people feel shame about our emotions. We are here to fix that. Counseling is not affordable. The supportive, healthy online community is hard to find and feeling isolated, lonely, and depressed at home alone, especially during COVID is prevalent. According to WHO report that one person commits suicide per one second. Sorry about that. 40 people commit, one person commits suicide for 40 seconds. Total 800,000 people per year. I will edit that later. About my story, I have survived bipolar, depression, anxiety, eating disorder, public humiliation, death. I'm 39, I've healed, I'm a healer. I'm ready to support the public. We're building media to teach the world, depth psychology, kindness, respect, truth, honor, balance, collaboration, and simple life by tackling the conscious mind, unconscious mind, and subconscious mind. We Our strategy is to tap into the alter state um, industry, which is trillion dollar business. Now the solution is that we have 30 day happiness program. It is, to design, it is designed to help you build healthy habits. And our motto is to save, save money going to therapy, 
And the MVP we're testing is a platform where you join on, web, uh, on, on Zoom with our expert talking about emotional well-being. The, we want to, uh, the, our market adoption is to tackle uh, so SDG goal number three uh, by increasing emotional intelligence. And I consult one-on-one -on -one um, one -on -one to CEOs who have bipolar uh, and who wants to heal. Our customers are Generation X and Millennials and mothers, uh, top level executives and corporate workers. And this is our team. I am the CEO, Shimin is US, UX designer, Balaji uh, is the acquisition, ma acquisition manager at a company. Uh, and then there are 136 million people in the US. This is millennials and Generation X combined. 92% of people have reported, that, according to WHO, that they have been affected by COVID-19. And if we take that 50%, uh, there are 62.5 million people in the US that we can target. This is the pricing strategy. Uh, people will pay $55 to join our community for a lifetime. And the 30-day happiness program is $555, including 30 minutes of consultation with me. My hour is uh, valued at $1,000 per hour and the subscription fee, $5, stay in the game. And if you want to uh, enter the expert class, pay $5 to learn and grow. We're looking for 12 month financing to create a replicable system. And we're currently doing crowdfunding uh, to raise 550K and initial stage, we need April, uh, we need $30,000 by April. And Embark- seconds, please. Embark has been really valuable uh, with one-on-one -on -one design thinking workshop and the Lisa podium. I've been attentively watching, learning from the experts. And it has helped help me solidify the persona, user research, ideate, ideate ideas with teammates. Thank you. This is the free speech of fake news. Uh, our project name is Empathia. Two minutes starting, thank you. Okay, so over the last few years, we've seen the devastating effects of misinformation and news in everyday lives. Last year, coincidentally, I was accepted into lead and I was discussing this problem with a friend. And that fast forward, you know, to October 26th, I opened this question to the lead community and my fellow co-founders responded and here it encouraged me <laughs> to organize a founding team around this idea and provide a solution. The founders are myself, Nazar, Nia and Rohit, and the, to respect the time, uh, we're kind of moving through this. And then um, Rohit will take this slide. Yeah, so um, with, with the effects that we've seen across this problem, as Emmanuel mentioned, right, who's, who's one of the target users that we really want to focus on? Um, we are, we're all really affected by the spread of misinformation going on. The persona we want to target is uh, essentially one of the people who also plays an important role in the spread of misinformation. Um, and he does that essentially by some of his uh, inherent aptitude of uh, not being able to listen to diverse opinions and really attaching to his like-minded peer group. So how do we really break that cycle? What the user really needs is reliable information that he can trust. And he can also form a sense of connection with the community where his opinion can be presented and his opinion can be respected as well. And we really wanna to draw towards uh, the, making the user feel confident in their information that their sources are reliable and also being able to build a sense of connection with the community and mainly have a mutual respect of opinion so that he can talk as well as listen to other diverse opinions. And some of the next steps we'll target uh, from this main user essentially is gonna be minorities and, and um, other young adults who form a growing user base today. Uh, next slide. Go ahead, Nia. So our project Empathia is coined from two terms, empathy and sympathy, which drives um, our mission to create solutions for betterment of society, you know, that place empathy for others, critical thinking, working together for mutual benefit as the core values that precede our thoughts and actions. Next slide. So with that, I'm gonna just talk about our idea a little bit. 
Social entrepreneurship is our operating model, and based on that, our value proposition is to solve the problem of misinformation uh, by building a platform that is founded on common governing principles and an interalliance framework. Um, our goals are to meet the needs of our users. In, in this case, if you saw the persona that Rohit talked about, who are the information consumers. By educating them, by providing technology resources so that they can verify the authenticity of the information, uh, by building a sense of connection and trust through community engagement, and ultimately just compelling them to think critically uh, and with empathy as a basis for self-regulation while sharing or consuming information. So through our empathy a platform, we will engage on programs that meet those goals. The, uh, the Interalliance framework is a basis for a unifying network and partnerships with organizations that share our vision and purpose and they're aligned by those common governing principles and they enable products and services that meet the program objectives. So the Embark uh, journey has truly helped us in that and the whole design thinking process have, has helped us narrow down on the, um, on the, uh, the user that we wanna target. I think that covers Okay, so where we're going next, we're gonna cover that. We're gonna do more interviews to test the hypotheses. We've collected already a ton of research and statistical data. We've met with the data on purpose. Like they had a, a conference like two weeks ago that we attended. We've interviewed people with Partnership IA, uh, Center of Humane Technology. So we're just doing a lot of interviews and getting, so that, uh, my apologies. We're just doing a lot of interviews and researching more. How Embark has helped us is one of our design thinkers, Juan S. He's completely helped us. He's kind of helped us narrow down the focus of our program and where we're trying to go. And three key activities were the problem statements, empathy mapping, and persona development. Initially, we kind of just went too big and he's helped us narrow the focus to try to understand where we should uh, take this going forward. Three out of four children in the world that have missed school during COVID are from Latin America. And what does this mean to the social capital cost? About $1.2 trillion in their cumulative lifetime earnings. So next slide, Saliha. Next, next page. <laughs> so who are we as a company? We at Propel, we are a venture philanthropy fund empowering social entrepreneurs to close the education gap in Latin America. Keep going, Saliha. So, there are already a few entrepreneurial local heroes. Uh, Mariana with Laboratoria, she's doing STEM education. Ensenia Peru is a Teach for America of Peru from Daniel Arafo. And Lala is a leadership academy for underserved kids between the ages of 14 to 18 by Diego. But then there are very far few of these local education heroes in the region and we need more of these. Next. So who is our ideal customer persona? So Jessica, uh, from Kantaya, she provides after-school support for underserved children, and she kept 300 children just during COVID learning, By then she was their only lifeline. And her bold vision is to support 50,000 children in three years. She's been doing, running Kantaya for 10 years already, won lots of awards, and the abbreviation C you see in the bottom of the screen lists really is an abbreviation for leadership, impact, scalable business model, fantastic team, and uh, a sustainable revenue model income stream as well. So keep next, Saliham. So what is our value proposition? As part of Propel, Esika wants to scale and Esika will receive funding, mentorship and digital expertise from a community of global impact partners to reach her 50,000 children goal. Next. So what we are trying to do here is as part of our Jessica is going to be part of our MVP where we're going to test all the things that we said about. We're going to give her those things, funding, mentorship, and digital expertise, and see if the, we can build an asset for her that can help her meet maybe the first step to reach her 50,000 goal. And then we're going to replicate this process and run a fellowship program for more social entrepreneurs like Jessica using this model of finding, inspiring them, connecting them with social entrepreneurs and capacity builders, and finally accelerating their impact. Next, Saliha. So this is just our value proposition restated. We focus on closing the K-12 education gap in Latin America by acting as a bridge between global resources and local entrepreneurs. Next. 
So this is our business roadmap. We start in Peru, starting in August with a cohort of 10, so education uh, entrepreneurs. And then from there, we go all over to the Andean region. And finally, in year 10, our goal is to empower 1,000 change makers and uh, giving access to 10 million kids for education in all of Latin America. Next, Saliha. So this is our team. Claudia and I are the co-founders. Claudia is from Peru, I'm from India. And one day when it's successful in Latin America, I want to take this to India. Maria Fernanda, she has uh, worked in a nonprofit accelerator in Colombia. She's also joining her team. And Ashwin is helping us with the digital expertise. And the reason we are doing this is uh, we both come from corporate. We've done a, benefited a lot from education ourselves. And we've done a lot of work in the social impact space, both of us. And at this point of our lives, we realize it's not about what we have, but what others don't have and how we can help them attain it. Next. 10 seconds. We got some partners uh, to do the test the MVP right now. So we have Stanford, McKinsey, Ernst & Young, Uncharted, and a few other partners that are helping us uh, test the MVP. That's it. Thank you so much.